We are marking Easter this year in the midst of crisis. It's unlike anything we've known for generations. Our world has been turned upside down by this pandemic that is present with us right now. We do not yet comprehend what the longer lasting effects on a broken world will be. Crisis is shaking us all. We must remain in our homes. Our previous rhythms of life no longer apply. Many of our earlier priorities and much of our earlier plans now ring hollow or unimportant. But some things remain. The importance of Easter remains. Its message continues as it has done throughout the centuries. The cross of Jesus does not ring hollow. It's as important as it has ever been. The gospel remains and it makes it clear. We need Jesus. On this Good Friday, let us go to the letter to the Hebrews. God's word speaks to all people in all times, but now, especially now, this is God's letter to us. At its heart is a great truth for us to hear. Jesus reveals God. Jesus is the prophet above all prophets, the ultimate truth. He is the anointed king above all God's kings, the ultimate power and authority. And he is the great high priest above all priests. Let's think about this last one for a minute. Jesus is our great high priest. We know what a priest is from the ancient times, from the days of Moses and Aaron. The priests in the Old Testament ministered in the tabernacle and the temple. They led the people in worship. They performed sacrifices for holiness and they taught the law of righteousness. All that feels like a different world to ours, but there is actually much in common. We are in need of the same thing as our spiritual ancestors. What they needed, the priests provided. The priests embodied God's pastoral presence. They were the way in which God's love, patience and kindness were made present and real. If you had a problem, the priests were the pathway to God's grace. Through their ministry, an unholy people could abide in the presence of an awesome and life-giving holy God. Of course, these ancient priests were themselves flawed and broken and sinful. Some of them acted falsely and used their God-given position to make themselves rich and powerful. By the time of the prophets, people like Ezekiel, the word of the Lord was often against these priests and the people longed for the real thing. The need for God's pastoral presence remained. The Lord is my shepherd, the songwriter sang. Therefore I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We need God's pastoral presence. Like our ancient brothers and sisters, we long for it and ache for it. And so they cried out for a truly great high priest. They longed for the true worship of a true temple. They longed for those who could usher them into the presence of God so that they may rest in his fullness of blessing. Jesus answers this longing. Jesus is our high priest and he is not like those who came before. In Jesus, we do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Today, Jesus is God's pastoral presence for us. We turn to him with our problems our defilements, our sins, our wayward hearts, and we turn to him in this darkest valley of the current moment. Jesus doesn't just perform sacrifices for us as a great high priest. He lays down his life for us. 
The cross is the cost of his burden for us. He carries us as a good shepherd and opens for us a new and living way through the curtain that separates us from God. He pays what we cannot pay. He cleans what we cannot clean. He makes us unblemished forever as ones who are being made holy. When Jesus teaches us, he doesn't just speak the words of the law. He writes the essence of God's law in our hearts by his spirit so that we can live and breathe it. He leads us in the way of life and justice and peace. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. We need him, our great high priest. We need Jesus. We need him now more than ever. We need the hope of Jesus. Let us draw near to God, God's letter to us says, with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Jesus is faithful, and so we have hope. We need the presence of Jesus, his wisdom, his guidance, his instruction, his direction of our lives, his priestly ministry. In this current season, it's like the waters are being churned up like dark muck stirred into what was once clear. Where we might have made our own way once, now we truly need his presence. Right now, fear and uncertainty and weariness is being churned up. These dark waters may even immerse us in bereavement and grief and anger. We need Jesus. Right now, the false priests of our own age are being revealed. Wealth, class, career paths and self-sustained strength are not as robust as we thought they were. Our acceptable addictions, the, the dulling of our senses through money, sex and power are revealed for what they really are. Attempts to anaesthetize ourselves from exposure to crisis. They are false comforts, false pastors, blind things to lead us into pits in the dark. We need Jesus. Right now in front of us is revealed that age-old foe, death itself. We have tried to create a world that is sanitized from death. We have brought the lie that we can live forever and more than that, that we can have eternal youth and that's all that matters. But it's not true. We will come to the end of our life. We will all pass through the crisis of our own mortality and we need Jesus. He is the answer to all these things. He is the light in our darkness. His death answers the threat of death. He has faced this foe and he has overcome on the cross. His death answers the power of idols. His victory is by faith and not by power and might and self-fulfillment. His death answers our fear. His death is not for him but for us. He has taken our sins and burdens and he walks with us. He is the pastoral presence of God for us. Have you ever noticed the shape of Easter? Its message remains the same. By the grace of God, death gives way to life. Jesus, our priest, passes through the grave, carries and expires our sins, and is raised into a newness of life. God calls us now to follow him, to give ourselves to him in hope and faith, and pass through our current shadowy valleys with the inbreaking of his new life. Jesus our priest has gone before us and goes with us, making a way. Even now, especially now, will you follow him into God's pastoral presence?